Rick Ross responded to Drake's you jab. Crack smoke is the exhaust from my pen and pad. Ghost writers, they get the floss, what you could have had. This, as soon as the diss was put out, he already fired back with the diss track towards him. And it's crazy because he calls out Drake for a lot of things and the beat that he goes over is just sick. He's got hard hitting drums. He's got the violin playing in the background. It's just like a, a funeral song. It sounds like something straight out of Godfather. I can't believe that Ross was the first one to respond back to Drake and he was this dang quick. Hip hop is going crazy with the responses, with the battles, with the raps, with the everything. It's just, I just don't even know what to expect now. And even more so, Mac Main was over here getting that punch from TDE about Drake dropping his diss and they're going back and forth exchanging, you know, words on Twitter, X. This, this is crazy because I'm like, bro, we've never had this much conflict that seems like it's popped off all at one time for music, rap beefs, all of that good stuff. And it's it's cool. Like, I, hey, I'm all for it as long as everybody just keeps it on the tracks and do what they need to do. Send your shots how you send them. Show who's the best man for the job. But did any of you guys expect that Rick Ross is going to jump out the back and be the first one to drop a bomb back on Drake as soon as he dropped? Man, let me, let me just help you guys understand what this man said. Let's unpack the things that Rick Ross had to say. He told Drake that he had a nose surgery because he didn't like his dad's black nose, which we believe that Drake did have nose surgery a while back. And you know, Drake is Jewish and black. So they're saying that, you know, he may not have wanted to look so black and ethnic. So he went ahead and changed his nose. Man, <laughs> oh man, it's, it's, it's up. Another fact that Rick Ross threw in the air was that Drake had the six pack surgery, which we all saw when he was at his most fit, you know, weight and size. And he looked like he was in the gym quite a bit, but everybody speculated that the man had the six pack surgery. And now Ross is saying that the six pack disappeared. So now that's why we're seeing Drake covering himself up, wearing different outfits at his shows and things like that. Do you guys think that's why this is happening? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I have to say that Ross, Ross was hitting with some zingers on this. He also told Drake that his flow is copy and paste. There's really no uniqueness to it. It's no difference in style, how he does his flow and things like that. Do you believe that it was pretty much straightforward flow? He doesn't um, have a great switch up? If you think that he switches up his bars very well or his sound, his tone, things like that. Name some of the songs in the comments that you really like how Drake does his thing, you know, how he flows and spits on his on his tracks. Another allegation that's uh, comical as well is that Ross is calling him white boy throughout this song. So he says Drake is that white boy who tries to hang around black people at the park. And I mean, we all know people that are like that that try to fit into a group that they're not necessarily a part of, but you know, they have a lot of friends that are in that particular group. So they try to, you know, hang out and some people do it for the right reasons and things like that. And other people just want to do it to be down with the group or the team and things like that. So here he's trying to say that Drake's a poser and he really leans more towards the white side than actually being around black people and hanging in his, you know, his roots and his elements of black. He also calls him out for having ghost writers and that they're, you know, writing these bars for him and that he's having to break off money to them for putting the track together and spitting the bars and all of that craziness. Ross also addresses the fact that he was getting at Kendrick about splitting his profits to TDE, Top Dog, for 50% of his um, you know, royalties and all of his different money that comes in. And Ross is saying that he's paying Birdman and Wayne and that he has to keep paying Wayne money consistently and also ties in Jay Prince, who he's saying that Jay Prince is getting money from him as well. So if you look at that, that's three different hands that Drake has in his pot before he actually gets to cash his checks. So who's getting taken for more money? Is it Kendrick or is it Drake? Because both of them have people that potentially could be, you know, getting a big chunk of their royalties, their money and things like that. But, you know, as we know, Kendrick seems like he has one person at the top that was getting money. And who knows if Top Dog's still getting money because Kendrick is now independent. And Drake has three. He's got Birdman, Wayne, and Jay Prince, presumably. Well, Ross thinks so. He also tells Drake, we can take it how you want to take it. And when you see me, to check me. So he's letting him know he's with all smoke. And if you have beef with him... He's willing to address it in whatever kind of way, shape, or form that you want to take it to. If you want to go on bars, if you want to have it go to the streets, if you want to catch the fade, whatever. 
Rick Ross is saying that he's with everything that Drake would deliver to him and that, you know, Rick Ross got the Haitians and the Zoes and then Drake has, you know, the, the African guys out there in Toronto that, you know, is all the, the Haitians and stuff too. So it's, man, I just hope they don't go into this whole big battle of cliques and crews and who's going to do what and what gangs is with what. Keep it on wax. Do your thing. Spit these bars, and I really hope that everybody's doing this to just up the competitiveness and that they're really planning on working on music together or just even all going to drop music, which would be the best way to hit us as fans over the head by having us think that they really have this beat. Oh, and the best part I liked about Ross's diss is that he actually addressed the reasons why he unfollowed Drake on Instagram and what made him even want to diss back. So he was pissed that Drake sent French Montana a cease and desist letter about some music and sent the police to his house or wherever he was at at the time to, you know, stop his album from coming out and the project being put together the way he was doing it. So, I mean, that's logical reasons. And then also, you know, he's a good friend with Future and then other people in the industry that he has friendships with. So I'm sure he has more insight into what happened, why he feels some type of way about what got delivered. But man... Um, who was to expect that Rick Ross is going to be the first one to answer and that he came off this vicious? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I don't I don't know where it's going next, but it's, it's up and it's stuck now. I don't see this coming down for a while. We might have a hot summer full of disses, bars, tracks, great music, all of these good things. So I hope you guys are ready and stay tuned because I'm going to try and hit it as often as these things come down the pipeline. And like I said, I had to jump in quick give you guys this message because Rick Ross already dropped as soon as I was done with Drake. All right. See you guys later, Splashers. Catch you on the next one.